Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. Somebody in the comments recently asked about flyback boosters, and this comes up from time to time. And I really don't like flyback boosters anymore because insofar as they're supposed to fly back to the launch site, they really can't get very far and they generally need to reserve some fuel or jet propellant in order to get back. So I prefer fly forward boosters, which was what was intended with the Energia system with the boosters on Energia. They were actually supposed to fly forward to a forward landing site in Kazakhstan and then land. And that helps because you don't have to reserve much fuel except for RCS. And when we are talking about fly forward boosters, of course, I've developed the Orion carrier plane. And so I decided to strap the shuttle to it. And you can see the orange tank has been split up into four. It's not really the same amount. Uh, these will only last six minutes and 30 seconds altogether. And they are the same size tank. And the two on the Orion carrier plane will feed the shuttle's engines first. And then the two on the shuttle will continue on. And so for those not familiar with the Orion carrier plane, it is a methane oxygen system. Its engines are somewhere in efficiency between the BE-4 engines of Blue Origin and the Raptor, not, uh, Raptor engines of SpaceX. And we do have nine of them. And the idea here is that the Orion carrier plane will give the shell a boost. Of course, the shell engines are running because they are ground lit. And then it will separate off and the shuttle will continue on. And in this case, the Orion carrier plane would land somewhere downrange, and so it can give a very substantial boost to the shuttle, instead of what a flyback booster would do, which is much less. And the shuttle needs it because one reason we don't do this system with the shuttle is because it became so big. They thought about this sort of thing with the shuttle when it was much smaller and had a smaller cargo bay and could fit more fuel inside. But once it got a certain size, this was no longer tenable. And that's why we got the arrangement that we have of the shuttle with the big external tank, because it needs the external tank to fuel the engines because it can't fit the fuel in, inside of it anymore. And in the boosters. And now we could have had two boosters. In fact, I've done that with the Orion carrier plane before. I replaced the solid uh, rocket boosters with two Orion carrier planes. There is a video on that, two videos on that on the channel already. Uh, but in this case, we are just giving it a boost with just one Orion carrier plane, which is, of course, much more streamlined. And here we are making orbit without too much trouble. And, uh, well, the periapsis is shy of orbit so that we can deorbit the fuel tanks, of course. Just like with the orange tank, we don't want those making orbit. But we have plenty of Delta V remaining, and we're carrying 25 tons of cargo in the form of avgas in this case. Now, seeing that we had plenty of Delta V remaining in the orange tanks there, I decided to put 30 tons, and also we have to contemplate the return of the Orion carrier plane, right? Uh, it's not getting to the velocity it normally needs in order to get to our Bahamas runway downrange, and that's one of the problems with this uh, fly-forward system for the United States. For the Soviet Union, they could have a fly-forward booster landing in somewhere in Kazakhstan without any problems because it's Kazakhstan, but we have launches over water, and we don't have a lot of downrange places for our fly forward boosters to land. And that's a problem for the Orion carrier plane. We have a runway at the Bahamas. We could potentially go to Cape Canaveral, and in this case, we're aiming for Cape Canaveral and launching out of Boca Chica. Uh, so, as the Orion carrier plane separates and the shuttle continues, you can see our path to Cape Canaveral. But can the Orion plane get there? Orion carrier plane get there? Not really. It's called the Orion carrier plane, by the way, because it was meant for the Orion 3 space plane from 2001 A Space Odyssey. So that would essentially do the same thing, except it has enough space for its internal fuel. It uses methane and oxygen, which is denser than the hydrox that the shuttle has. Other things to note, the shuttle's engines are not tilted. They are straight through. Otherwise, of course, because it's not trying to point the engines through the center of mass of the shuttle plus the external tank, uh, they would not work very well. Here we're just making orbit, again with 30 tons in the bay, so it has greater capability than the regular shuttle, and possibly could do even more, but I was contemplating whether we would need to put jet engines on the Orion carrier plane. So, with the fly forward system, you have to put wings and landing gear on, but generally that's lighter than reserving fuel for a fly back, and uh, it's also better than the amount of fuel you need to reserve for something like Falcon 9. And when we talk about a flyback booster, we do have to ask, well, what is the benefit over the Falcon 9? 
uh, when the Falcon line comes back and is reusable and that it seems very simple. Um, it is the matter of reserving propellant and also the max speed that the Falcon 9's core can get to before separating and coming back, right? So in order to have the Falcon 9 core be recoverable, it has a maximum speed limit. Uh, this does not have that much of a speed limit. It can get to 4,000 meters per second before it hits its limit. Um, so that's a lot more velocity you can impart to a payload or to the second stage before separating off. But we're not getting to that 4,000 right now. Still, we're getting to a very substantial velocity. And this, uh, I don't know why it's reading some delta V there, but uh, it doesn't have that much delta V. It's a little bit confused. We are also carrying some surplus oxygen for some reason, and I'll have to investigate why that is. We shouldn't be. And yep, yeah, so the limits to this, of course, are because of the stress on the airframe. We can't hit too many Gs, and we hit them a lot very suddenly here. It can't be crude. It has to be uh, controlled by, well, maybe an AI in the future, but a drone control. And here we see the peak G forces. It generally hits about 11 Gs. Uh, the meter on the side there is a little bit off. It's just about 11 Gs usually. And this one was a little bit steeper than usual. It'd have uh, more horizontal velocity, normally speaking. But yes, we're not getting to Florida this time. We're landing somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico. And I will contemplate this more. Maybe we'll need jet engines on it. But maybe I'll just design a shuttle that's meant for this thing. And that might be a little bit better. The big complication technically is actually the cross-feeding between all the tanks that are feeding into the shuttle main engines. That would be annoying. Though something similar is done with the external tanks on the X-15. So it's not unheard of. Anyway, so that's the idea and maybe there's merit to it. It doesn't look too bad at least. But with that, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.